Oh. Live. Come on, Zoom. I'll be glad when I start. Is Zoom hating? Yeah, Zoom's just it takes forever. I'm gonna just start, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna start restreaming pretty soon. All right, we should be live now, and we are okay. Are we live? We are definitely. Yep, there it is. The link. Hey, everyone! Thank you for listening to Blurred's Eye View. Blurred's Eye View is a podcast that covers geek pop culture and everything in between from a mm-hmm. POC point of view. I'm your host, Chris Fury, and with me is my co-host, Brandy Blocker, the cosplay diva. How you doing, Brandy? I just like hearing that, the cosplay <laughs> diva, and I feel like I need to do more to, to live up to that. <laughs> I feel like I'm cosplaying Brandy right now because I took a shower today and I don't have on sweatpants, as we discussed, so I feel like a cosplay diva right now, so I'm doing good. <laughs> Normally, we would have had our other co-host, Dar- uh, Darius DC, with us. But he's out celebrating his birthday. So happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday, DC. You know, the reason why we're not with him is we're quarantining anyway. And he stays in another city. So listen, (laughs) he's not a hop, skip, and a jump. I was like, so, but uh, happy birthday, Darius. Uh, We do have a special guest, however, we have Mm -hmm. with us. If you are a comic book aficionado, then you may have seen our guest work on comics such as All Star Batman. Black Panther, World of Wakanda, and most recently her work was featured in the HBO series Lovecraft Country. She's currently having a Kickstarter for her next project, Aquarius, the Book of Murr. Give a warm welcome to the Jane of all trades. Yes. You are Richardson. Thank you for coming on a few. Hello, hello, Chris. Brandy, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been it's a pleasure. Trust me. Um we're just gonna dive right into this. Right, uh, we're go. gonna do <laughs> we're gonna do as this. they say, get ready for going. Yeah, so you know, normally we have uh a lot of little segments, but you know, I couldn't let this one particular segment get by me because well, it was just so much news. Um Thursday was Disney Investor Day, and they really need to recoin that as Disney, we dropping all this news on your ass. Day. Oh yeah, they they pulled a Beyonce. Oh my goodness! Oh, yes. like, Disney dropped day. an album. Yeah, I've never seen <laughs> talking about talking about holding my beer. You know, it's a whole yeah. my beer. Like, it, it, it went from Warner Brothers saying, "Oh, we're gonna uh, show you Wonder Woman on HBO Max." And the theaters, and so you get to watch. If you have HBO, then you have HBO Max for free. And if mm-hmm. you're paying for it, then you get to still watch it for free without an extra premium attached to it. And yeah. it's, I think, it's available for like a month. And and this is on Christmas. And people, wow. you know, I, I'm one of them. You know, I'm a fan. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, absolutely. It. You know, and I'm like, oh, nice, cool, because I've been wanting to see this. Mm-hmm. Yes. That news went on for a while, and you know, everyone's still waiting on the Zack Snyder cut for Justice League, which is starting in the beginning. Somewhere in January of next year, I believe. And that was all we were getting. You know, we, we were supposed to get Black Widow from Marvel. And thanks to COVID's bitch ass, you know, it just. <laughs> COVID going to hear that and run up on you. Hey, you might want to watch your mouth. <laughs> I've coined That's it. The vitamin I, C I'll send you. Right. <laughs> but it's managed to just kind of hold everything up. And then Disney had Investor Day and they literally just said, you know what? basic why was i literally about to do the same <laughs> see we're here exactly we, can, we are this here. is why we work so well together <laughs> literally <laughs> but they I went, great you. yeah yes. they went balls to the wall with all this news um i'm gonna do a quick uh, i don't know if you can say it's a quick rundown you can't because you won't even want to get to everything <laughs> yeah. just god just so, so much already they have Bring at least the 10 10 Star Wars centric shows. We have Star Wars Rangers of the New Republic. We have Ahsoka based on the Ahsoka Tano. That's a limited series. And obviously, it's going to star Rosario Dawson. It's going to hit. Oh, that's going to hit. Um, hit. We have Andor starring Cassio, Cassian from uh, the Rogue One film. So that's obviously going to take place before Rogue mm-hmm. One. Um, the Bad Batch, which was from the clone. Uh, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars series and the Rebel series. So that's an animated series. Uh, we already knew about Obi-Wan Kenobi, but then they're bringing Hayden Christensen back. Which was exciting. It was, was bigger, even bigger news. It was like, okay, yeah, we're getting Ewan McGregor as, as Obi-Wan. 
but then we're bringing Hayden Christensen back. He's to play like, who got the high ground now? <laughs> He's like, I'm coming back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, uh, Patty Jenkins had put out a, a nice little trailer, and she's talking about her father, how her father was a uh, was an air fighter pl- pilot, and she ends it with. The, they don't even give you the tagline. They just show her roller skating on like the tarmac like rollerblade on the tarmac then she goes to her car and she's talking about her father and how he died in 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 battle you know in the dog fight possibly and then they show her putting on the rogue squadron flight suit and walking away she puts on the helmet and she walks away so she's doing rogue squadron you know so patty jenkins is making major moves after wonder woman and <sighs> it's gonna be good because i love it wonder is. woman it i really was uh, pleasantly su- surprised it was one of the few films I walked into and I was like, I'm not going to put heavy expectations on this. I'm just going to enjoy it. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of here for anybody that had something to do with that. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Um, talk about uh, saving a franchise. Oh. Listen, <laughs> but it take a woman sometimes, don't it? Yeah, I gotta admit it. Don't, don't it? <laughs> I'm one of those guys who I'll admit, I'm like, okay, you know, right now you might need a female to handle this business because just saying yeah (laughs) so um they're doing a live action slash cgi rescue rangers i saw that yesterday what (laughs) they're they're not pulling they're not pulling any punches that's and i'm like if they hit us with the theme song uh you know like i mean they they it was crazy because just the week prior, they said that the next season of DuckTales that they have will be their last season. But this was on the tales of, no pun intended, <laughs> um, this was on the tales of them saying that uh, they were going to do a Darkwing Duck series and possibly a, uh, a Tailspin, possibly Tailspin. I was just going to say, if they bring back Tailspin. They're like, they're right. just digging in the 90s bin and just like, hey, right. here's, here's everything. Here's everything. Well, some of that stuff we're here for. Some oh, reboots, yes. I'm not. Yeah. yeah, but they, they are going crazy, you know, uh, and then that's just the mainstream stuff that we know about. They have other stuff like they are they're going very uh, uh, centric on a lot of animated films they're going to do like uh, they're doing one. Well, see, they're already giving us Baymax. They're giving us mm-hmm. Baymax. They're giving us Zootopia Plus, and I will say I'm here for that. Listen, <laughs> that woke, I feel like I got to do this for Zootopia. They was woke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about being woke in a time, you like, you just, like, here, watch this, everyone. And they made tons of money, and yet, like, it's still an underlying message, and it's mm-hmm. in your face. God, it was a great a film. Uh, but then they're giving us Tiana, the series. Right. After all these years, and I was like, you know what? They never gave Tiana her just do. I'm like, no. <laughs> her and I, I didn't watch the movie when it came out. I had watched it years later. And by years later, I mean like this year. Um, <laughs> my, my son was pushing me on it because he's the one that put me on Moana. Moana's like goat Disney movie now for me. Yeah. Um, it was Aladdin. Then I watched Moana and I was crying and singing the songs. I lost yep. it. So then he told me to watch Coco and he told me to watch yeah. um, The Princess and the Frog. So of course I was hearing for years, she's not human the whole movie so I was like I'm not really here for it and there was so much more there that could have been done so to -hmm. hear that they're going to have the series now I'm like please yes listen to the people's cries and not only that and it was funny because I follow Anika Noni Rose on Twitter Mm -hmm. and she just said I have some big news for you and I wasn't putting two and two together I'm just Ah. like I have big news for you and then that drops and I'm like oh not only bringing it back they're bringing her back Yes. Uh, who know, else? That voice. Who know, else? And speaking of Anika Noni Rose, I'm going to go off a little bit. Watch Jingle Jangle on Netflix. I've been hearing so many good things about that. It, it's, it's, it's the Christmas movie that our people really were needing. You know, there's no Santa Claus, but there's a lot of magic. The music is fantastic. It's done by David Tower, David E. Tower. And it was an interview he did in which he said uh, the reason why he made this movie is he wanted he, he wanted his son to see a film based around holiday Christmas mm-hmm. yeah. feeling that starred us. Absolutely. So, uh, when you talk about the wardrobe, oh, the hair, I was just gonna say 
I mean, Oof. you thought <laughs> it's up there with Black Panther. How we seen Black? Oh yeah, Panther, the just, trailer. I was sold yeah. and immediately put it in a queue when I saw Felicia Rashad with like gray dreads. Say less. Oh, I'm yeah. like, that's that's not a hard the, sell the, at the, all. The, the, the mm-hmm. hairstyles yeah. alone, and the I mean, I'm just like the girl oh, had these... like an Afro puff mohawk. Yeah, mohawk these, thing, and I'm like, these... this is beautiful. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, horse with with mustard and yellow, the mustard and blue plaid. I'm like. Oh yeah, Forrest Whitaker's uh, little suits was cute. And he's, and he's singing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but I like, like that in a musical. I'm like, make everybody sing, even if they don't feel comfortable. Everybody sings, right. everybody dances. Like you'll get I love that. Yeah, everybody pretty much. We'll fix it in the studio. Just, just start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of Disney's film, one of the Disney films they have is called Waju, which is a Pan African film. No details on it, but that's mm-hmm. the name of it. Um, another one they're doing is. Uh, in in Canto, in the set in Colombia, another one. That, yeah, and then another one they're doing is called Turning Red, which is done through Pixar, and that's about a young girl named May who, when she gets too excited, she turns into a giant red panda. So, <laughs> you know, they, I am sold. <laughs> they are just laying, and I'm just like, oh, y'all just making sure these next couple of years what? we just aren't going to be bored at all. <laughs> you know, with uh, Twitter saying we're all getting superpowers after the 20th, can oh, yeah, I, yeah. can my superpower be when I get angry? Big <laughs> red panda, because that, <laughs> okay. that's it. That's it. That's the superpower. So, and that's just the Star Wars, that and that's just the kids, now. yeah, that's the Star Wars and the kids centric stuff. But then they go to the Marvel stuff, and we were already waiting for everything Marvel. Oh, yes. And, you know, they showed us an extended trailer for WandaVision, which has a release date now that's coming out in January. And it gives you so much more in this trailer. And, and oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Tiana Paris is playing Monica Rambeau from the Captain Marvel She's film. So, talented. so we get her. We get we get Monica Rambeau. I don't know if we're going to get Spectrum yet, but, oh, I'm waiting on it. Um <laughs> We also get Darcy from from Thor. She shows up. Yeah, so you know, so we get Darcy back, and man, it's just content. They it's just, just content, just constant content. Like, what are you doing? Out. <sighs> I'm staying <laughs> in the house like this week. They sent out a survey. Like, hello. What are, you- <laughs> what, are, what are some of your personal gripes? What would you like to see more of in the Marvel universe? Right. And they're like all Since of you're it. You're asking, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three words all the things mm-hmm. all the things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was that was the the phrase underneath that button i said that they put they just said <laughs> all the things they're like the internet will take care of it let them do the rest of the promoting we'll right? just drop it yeah, it was it. great stuff uh we get we finally got a release date for um uh, uh captain Amer- well i keep wanting to say captain America because he has the shield now uh Fair. falcon and winter soldier yeah you know <laughs> you know well technically that's... he is cap it's kind of yeah, like exactly. a title you know, like lieutenant commander exactly captain america exactly i mean that's, that's who he is you know and uh the trailer they have for that one is is fantastic it, ha- it has a buddy cop feel to it because i knew <laughs> they were gonna have that vibe and i'm happy they went because it's that funny route. it's yeah. so funny because even watching them during the winter soldier and or uh not during the war uh civil war watching them during civil war and just the the back and forth that they have like can you let your seat back or let your seat up some no oh it's it's (laughs) hilarious or i'll never get tired of the on your left like on your your left i love that whole bit like so this is on your left he was like come on man you know (laughs) uh what's the other oh yeah when they're fighting spider-man they're both fighting spider-man and they both get webbed up and he's he right before it happens you know falcon lets off red wing and it carries pete out the window and 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 bucky says they're both webbed up at this point and bucky says you couldn't do that earlier and falcon <laughs> was like i hate you so much right now <laughs> the lines they i'm like oh this is this should be just fun this should just be fun you know it, it's obviously going to be a lot of espionage and a lot of seriousness but seeing their back and forth i'm here for that i'm all It'll be, and that. anthony mackie does that really well yeah so anything i've seen him in he seems like a natural at the witty banner so it's not going to be a hard sell for like you said this kind of buddy cop 
film thing that it seems like they're going to be doing. It's just like rush hour with superpowers. So <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> and I always wonder how much of it is improvisation. Is mm-hmm. there, are there guidelines? And then the actors are just allowed to do what it is that they do. Um, right. I've always costume. felt like that uh, about Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, there's no way you're like a by the script guy. You very much strike me as I'll do this character, but I'm just going and everyone else just work around this. And it's funny you mentioned exactly. it's funny you mentioned him because it was said that on the, on the set of Avengers, mm-hmm. he was hiding snacks because he has a thing where he snacks. So ah, okay. he has low blood the, sugar. Yeah. <laughs> So the part where they're like all in the room talking and like Loki's staff is sitting in there and they start to argue prior to that, when he's walking around, all of a sudden, Tony just grabs like this bag of freeze dried blueberries and he just starts eating them. They those said they, that wasn't even in script. Snacks. Wow. Yeah, like he hid those on that set and just My literally just correct. grabbed the bag. And just, <laughs> he's just that smile. guy. I'm like, he's, okay. he's too cool not to be that guy. I think cool. I think of people like Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, you're just cool. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna hide some snacks, but I, I'm gonna start doing that. And like, what the hell? Is this? <laughs> She's gonna I'm walk gonna off. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I put these here earlier. You know, <laughs> these have been here <laughs> for a week. <laughs> like, see my name like is the... on it. He's like, I don't think that's healthy to eat anymore. <laughs> like, I think you should mind your business. Let me have a <laughs> fifty-second rule. <laughs> fifty-second oh, rule. God, <laughs> not adding the time to it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, James Gunn is doing the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special with the entire cast. So, uh, good lord, I they manage Mouse Money talks. I will say that much. Hmm. <laughs> Mouse Why Money talks playing? because they are going hand over fist. They're just like, hey, it's not going to be animated. It's not. You managed to get everybody, and it's going to be on Disney Plus. You're, that's what you're telling me. Okay, <laughs> I'm not mad at that. I'm not so. either. And then on top of that, I'm like, you guys don't have anything else to do probably for the next two years. <laughs> you might as well get on these, do these projects now before the world really opens back up. And I yeah. think that could also benefit all of us blurs because we can finally like get content mm. that's really paying off right now. Jeez, tell me about it. If you were, what is your take on the hand that Disney dealt? <laughs> that's what I- I think with everything that's happened this year, they really needed to grab people's attention because people started reverting to online media. I've I've seen some really major movie theaters here in Georgia close down. And so they're adjusting to the times, but as as Disney and Marvel likes to do, they like to come out with jazz hands and so to do that <laughs> i think they were just rolling everything out and, and this is kind of what i saw right before black panther the the film uh when they brought on tony c coates and they brought on mm-hmm. roxanne gay and Yona harvey they wanted to create an all-star team and really push the comic book first before the film came out just sort of strumming up interest in the character again I mean, people had been working on the series for a really long time. And so to generate new interests, they brought in new creators and people to give new life to it, as well as people like Brian Stelfreeze, who are comic book veterans that would bring out the hardcore fans and then bring out the literary fans with writers like Yona Harvey and Tani C. Coast, et cetera. And so I think this is their push the big red button fire <laughs> turn your phasers to stun yeah that's exactly what i imagine happened <laughs> like we're joking oh. about this but in my head like, that's oh, what's yeah. going on like, in corporate they, literally they lift up like, that glass box and they're like move and like just go that's exactly like, what happened yeah. and it's funny like what you said earlier brandy like yeah someone somewhere in the office is like they hit the wrong button and like, accidentally oh, spilled crap. coffee or something we weren't supposed happened. to let all of that out <laughs> like everything it was supposed. It was a timeline. What we'll happened? Through the was. timeline. <laughs> like, just do it. Look, it's fine. Let's just go ahead. And and then what that ends up doing is securing Disney Plus subscribers for the oh, next. Oh yeah. Yeah. How many years? Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't want to be that one person who hasn't seen it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 and I won't be. 
Yeah, like they <laughs> they announced there were like two announcements. Like they were saying, you know, they were saying it was like a little bit of struggle because you know once they were announced that they came on board, they had a lot of subscriptions, and then Mandalorian came out. And they had a lot more subscriptions, and then they right. some people would drop off after the series ended. Absolutely, exactly. and then they were picking exactly. back up again. So they're, I'm like, they were seeing a pattern, right? And they were just like, "Oh, okay, we're gonna fix this, right? We're gonna roll and you're it out to... for the next couple of years and let you know that we plan on keeping you engaged and entertained." Which is basically what ends up happening. You know, you signed up for HBO, and then your show comes out, and then once it's over, you're like, "Okay, well." I don't need to keep paying yeah. fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, I have Hulu just... and this and all these other <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, platforms. I mean, yeah, Make they some even people work for the money and yeah, they are they putting even... out the content. Yeah, they even went ahead and said, uh, "We're going to charge a dollar extra." So, like, if you just have Disney Plus and you pay six ninety nine, now you're paying seven ninety nine. I'm just like, they're like, with okay. all you just, with all you just gave us, I don't right. even care. <laughs> and considering Netflix on that bull, trying to yeah. go up. <laughs> I'm like Netflix. You used to not like ten dollars, <laughs> like, right? You're not right. Me Remember, it was like seven ninety nine. I'm yeah. like, okay. Netflix Five got finished. real bougie and forgot where it came from, <laughs> and I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, but, nope. Okay. So I mean, that's that. But that was the new segment. But good lord, was that a lot of news? It was <laughs> a lot, a lot. I mean, I'm still digesting. I'm just like, geez, what? what well, like, on my timeline, I still end up seeing something I didn't catch the last two days, and I'm like dang yeah. this too or hearing right. about other people starring and stuff that i guess can now talk about it right because right. it's out there so then it's like hey i'm in this so that's been really cool to see who's in what especially with iron heart i saw right. iron heart and about died i'm right. like what they're going what's there. happening you're they're doing this because i wasn't sure if we were going to see this right. for some years no lie i'm like they're not going to do this anytime soon and i'm glad um they're doing it whether it's because there's some people complaining even um, as far as there some of these is. shows there are, it there it is. <laughs> there it this is. America. <laughs> the, <laughs> just talking about how they're pandering uh, to us with shows and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, they're, y'all are always going to complain. Look, right, I no would rather, what. I'd rather them pander. I'd rather them push the content because these try. images are important. It's it something. It absolutely is. Yeah. You know, I had the opportunity to work with um, Melvin Van Peebles. And he is the father of Mario Van Peebles. Right. And we were doing this like off Broadway and then eventually onto the small theater and Broadway show. It was like a three man show. And for those who don't know who Mario Van, excuse me, Melvin Van Peebles is, he is, he was a World War II veteran. He was a, uh, he says he was the first black stock trader. And I was like, that sounds good. We'll go with that. <laughs> um, but also yeah. his film, Sweet, Sweet, Back's badass song was sort of the start of the black exploitation era of films, where he essentially, for a lot of people, was the first time seeing a black man on screen that wasn't a butler or a slave or just the typical or monster, mm. like the typical stereotypes of the day. And he wrote it, directed it, you know, and, and starred in it. And by then he had already been knighted and had all of these films that he created. And he was like, well, I don't know how to make a film, but I'm going to learn on the set of my first film. And he just created these, you know, masterpieces of his day. And studios around the United States started copying his films and making things like Shaft and Foxy Brown and all these different things. And when asked, aren't you upset that they mimicked your film, but then took out all of the politics and sentiment and made kind of this, you know, uh, replica of your work without any of the sentiment? And he said, no, not at all. He's like, there are brown folks working. My job is done. That's what I want. <laughs> wow. Right? They've, they've chosen those roles. They mm -hmm. made a choice. No one was forcing them to do that. They made a choice. They are working. They are being seen. And now there is a market. And right. people understand now that you can make a film that stars Black people and it's universal. It's not just a Black film for Black people and, and that's it. It's a film starring Black people for everyone. Right. And I think, you know, each each milestone sort of moves these things forward. Yes, you can have a black lead who is a superhero. You can have two, you can have Shuri 
and Ironheart. Oh my gosh, two intelligent young <laughs> inventors. I'm so in waiting for that. <laughs> right? You know, I, I saw somebody post it's just like, oh, well, how is this going to work with two redundant characters? And I was like, not a redundancy, a team. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then even to be messy, even if it is redundant, how many times have we had the same Caucasian male save the world and we felt no way? You know what I mean? Like you're you're still redundant. having them. Yeah, it's not redundant then. We still yeah. <laughs> go see it. So it doesn't it, yeah. it doesn't matter. The diversity is fantastic. I'm here for it. I'm all here of it. For it. Yeah, yeah. Because then we can have it and then we can reinvent it and we can we can get past it and say, okay, well, that's done. Now what else can we now what else? Yeah. I you Who's know, next? it's it's I can't tell you how many conversations I've had you know, like, okay, the latest piece of news that came out was um, they're not recasting T'Challa's role and they're doing it in respect of Chadwick Boseman and me being a fan already, obviously. Um, <laughs> you don't say I was that. okay. I, I, I was okay with that because I'm just like, okay, yeah. they're going with a natural, they were probably already going to do this mm -hmm. anyway. It's just, it got fast-tracked. And right. So they're just like, okay, we got to change course. We just have to change it now and we have to do it in a respectful manner. Yes. I'm okay with that because they were saying right. that the next round or the next film, you know, they're going to focus more on the characters of Wakanda. And I'm like, and you're going to give the role to Sherry. I already know it. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's what happened in World of Wakanda. Exactly. When T'Challa went away, Sherry was the Black Panther because right. she was next in line to be ruler and suitable for the role mm -hmm. i always always i love pointing out to people because i've seen the film i've been riding with black panther since i was 11 so awesome <laughs> I, I back anything from that world and seeing that film i've seen it at least and i'm not afraid to admit it at least 27 times that's okay <laughs> not bad <laughs> but there's the scene where that warrior falls and he's fighting in baku Mm -hmm. And right before they get into the battle, you know, he's kind of having, you know, M'Baku does his speech and everything else. And Shuri says something and he points her out. But if you pay attention, the door Malaje do not have their spears or their weapons face towards M'Baku. They have them guarding Shuri. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, if you read it differently, people were reading it like, oh, they're protecting her. They were like, no, she's protecting him. Yeah, somebody did her. some like uh like yeah. dual shots and pointed that out. And I rewatched it. I said I didn't catch that the first three times I watched mm -hmm. it in theaters because I did keep going back. Um, <laughs> but when they put it up there, I was like, that's a bad chick. Plus, yeah. she was looking unmoved and unfazed anyway. Very much the definition of unbothered, like, boy, I will wear you out. Okay. You know the kinds of things that I can make? I can break you into tang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Said I'm not the one or the two. I'm here for it. Oh, uh, and I love, you know, so I've, I've had those conversations with people and, and they were like, I didn't know that. I'm like, see, that's why you're you're stuck in the MCU world. And that's okay. And it's not gatekeeping. It's just I'm um, informing you like there's nothing wrong. You know, it's that stigma of that male centric mm -hmm. entity. You know, we got to do it all. We got to do it. And I know I sound crazy because I'm a guy, but it's not crazy. It's true. No. You know, when you have no. characters like Storm and Sherry and Monica Rambeau and uh, Misty Knight, these yeah. women are badasses. Yeah, they are. There, it's a huge draw, you know. Seeing Simone Misnick play Misty in the Luke, Luke Cage show, I'm just like, that chick is bad. Yeah, all day it's long. Believable. That yeah, exactly. Her to be a cop. You yeah. know, it, it reads really, really well. And and she, I, I felt bad because I'm like, when are you losing your arm? <laughs> <laughs> Not waiting. Like, is it this? It's oh my god, like that hot tub yeah. time oh, machine so, movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> every scene, you're like, come on. <laughs> I was the same way. I'm just like, oh, oh she just got an injury. Wait, my wife said, what? I'm like, it's coming. I just thought that was it. That wasn't it. <laughs> I'll explain later. Just, just watch. And so like I'm not um, obsessed with her dismemberment. I promise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the other piece of news, and I'll probably end it with that. And so we can go into our next topic. Um, they showed the Loki trailer. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Damn. 
<laughs> yes, they did. Very much worth that weight because he talk, is. <sighs> talk about dissecting a trailer because I'm pausing and looking at things and I'm like, this is Kang. We we getting Kang coming through here now, you know, and and I'm like, this is it. This is and I'm, I'm ready for those memes too after the rumor had already been out there that Jonathan was going to play him and I was like these memes you are because I can already see the Terrence Howard and T.I. anybody that says Kang with a twang you already know these memes are coming baby they're coming and I'm just like Kang, you, we can't have anything yeah Kang man. <laughs> are there going to be any we was Kangs any <laughs> <laughs> we can't have anything we're gonna run with that boy i'm here for it though well that now that you mentioned a few uh since our topic is generally about diversity and dissecting color in comics you have characters you have many women of color uh mm -hmm. out there and you have people of color period out mm -hmm. there in the comics realm, you know, you have Ironheart that was written by Evel Ewing back in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, Jasmine Truesdale, owner of AZA Comics down in Atlanta, you know, actresses such as Erica Alexander, who did Concrete Park. She wrote mm -hmm. the Jow spinoff and Amanda Steinberg, who did the Niobe series. Mm -hmm. How does it feel being that caliber? And what does it feel like to have to make that mark? in the world of comics? Well, I'm, it's funny because I'm drawing while I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> Constantly working, I love it. No. <laughs> um, I, I say this um, very similarly, but not comparing myself to one of the first black animators at Disney. I didn't get into comics thinking about being the first black anything or one of the few black anything. I just, I really love to draw and I love comics and I love storytelling and, and weird tales and sci-fi. And just, this is something that has been a part of my life as long as, as I can remember mm -hmm. from being a kid and watching Star Trek with my dad and talking about escape velocity because he's a physicist to you know, cutting out little cardboard ray guns and making my own stories and, and things like that. So being able to give back to something that's given so much to me means a lot. And to be able to do it for a living mm -hmm. as a full-time artist, that's something that I, I know I'm very fortunate to be able to do because there are a lot of people who want to, and it's a very difficult path because you know, say you go to art school and you get all of this debt and you come out, you might not necessarily have the work experience to be able to charge what you need in order to pay back your student loans and to start employing your passions immediately. And so I, I think where my path may vary from a lot of other artists is that I'm completely self-taught. I came from music and I learned a lot about my family history and some of the things that they endured to be able to do what it is that they do. You know, my father walking to Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, had some men drive by, if you can call them men, uh, and call them all kinds of names and throw canned food at him and broke his ribs and knocked, you know, bruised him up and knocked all of his stuff on the ground. And he got up and continued to go to school, taught himself physics, became a decorated officer and one of the you know, supervisors and expanders of the civil rights division, the US Coast Guard, one of the first eight men in the military after a particular uh, amount of time who were allowed to advance as a soldier. Wow. Because, uh, you know, during the Buffalo Soldier era, they could you know, advance, advance, advance. And then at some point it stopped and then they could only be stewards, which meant that they could only retire at, with a certain pay grade and they could only be allowed access. And, you know, they were basically condemned to peeling potatoes and janitorial work, whereas him and 
and just not him, not just telling me the, the struggles that he had, but the victories that he had despite in, in light of those things, it made me uh, resilient and know that I came from some folks who saw some really difficult times and pursued anyway. Like my, his mother, uh, Anna Richardson, uh, when she was, I believe in her thirties and she had passed the voting test, which included being able to recite the Bill of Rights verbatim. Uh, they were pretty certain that she cheated and they put her in jail for wow. three years, wow. but they didn't have any female prisons at the time in that part of Alabama. So they put her in a chicken coop where she developed pneumonia and she was outside in the 107 degree weather or the freezing cold. And she still became a nurse and raised, you know, seven kids, some of whom were not her own. And she's kind and she's still kicking. She just turned 92. Oh, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I came from some folks who are made of really tough stuff. And so knowing that and moving forward, it's, and some of the things that I experienced in my life, you know, at one point in my life, I was homeless and I didn't have a place to stay. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I was just too young and stupid to really understand the bad situation that I was in. But I just, it felt like a video game. Like this is the part of the story where you've got to level up. And if you want to get the powers and the sword and all of the extra, you know, downloadable content, you have got to <laughs> put in those repetitions. You've got to find the patterns. You've got to seek out your own patterns and move whatever is not serving you out of your way and move forward, build alliances, figure out how you can be of service with what it is that you make. And you employ your passions by being needed and being needed is, you know, creating something that you love, but then also creating something that's missing. And we were talking about all these different things that we've been waiting for and super excited about from you know the Marvel Universe and all these different platforms because those things are missing and there's an opportunity. But Marvel and DC and all of these different companies, they are giant entities. They can't capture everything. Mm -hmm. So that means as independent creators and to ind independent creators out there, there is an opportunity for you to create what is missing and what is needed and you don't have to do it for other people necessarily. It's, of course, you have to keep in mind your audience, but when you do something that you love or you're really interested in, it shows. It shows on the page. It shows in your writing. It shows in what it is that you make. And so I'm honored to even be mentioned with those creators, um, but this is something that I have to do. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't give myself a choice out of it. I doubt all the time. I'll look at my work. I'm like, Oh God, this is, why is it not like this? And I'll, I'll go through all of these different, like, I wish I had this of this person, then that of that person. And I could, you know, Frankenstein myself into this <laughs> awesome creator. But, you know, I, I have to say, okay, well, my body of work suggests maybe there is a discrepancy between what I see and what other people see. And this year especially has been a time for me to really move forward and invest in the things that I dream about and I love. And so I'm working on my first creator owned right now and I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance on me, just like all of these companies have invested in me from, you know, working on World of Wakanda to Lovecraft Country. It's like, okay, if I'm being trusted to work on this, then I need to trust my own ideas. And I just, man, I, I, I really can't tell you the, the amount of support or, or people bringing their daughters or their sons to me and say, please speak to the artist because that means that they trust me to guide them. Mm -hmm. I was like, you trust me with your babies. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's everything. And, and two, that means that 
as parents, they now have hope in the path of art, which is something that is kind of healing for my family as well, because my dad facing the circumstances that he faced, in addition to being a scientist and an officer, there's a difference between officer and soldier. And mm-hmm. folks are going to kill me for making not <laughs> making the distinction. He was an officer in in uh, the military. Uh, he was also an oil painter and a sculptor, and he he still is. He just he's getting back to that. And when I expressed early on that I wanted to be a musician or an artist, he he wanted me to do those things as a hobby but not as a profession because he didn't want me to suffer. And I think that's very true of a lot of, of parents or a lot of guides and guardians who, when they hear about their, you know, their kid's desire to be an artist, they don't know the path. And so they don't know how to guide them. And so they don't want them to struggle heading down a path that they don't know the trajectory of. And so it's not that they don't believe in you and your capabilities, it's that they don't believe in the path of art. But I was discussing yesterday, you know, there's so many things that touches an artist's hands. When you go to the grocery store, most of the times you're not actually, like outside of the produce and maybe meat, you're not actually seeing the product. You're seeing the graphic design that's displaying the product. An artist's hand had to touch that. And it's selling you an idea. All of these trailers, the motion graphics, down to the budgeting. So even if you're not a creative person per se, you don't have to cut yourself off from creative endeavors. And, and so a big part of, of, of doing this work is also learning the business learning what kinds of jobs you can have and then sharing with other creatives who may think like, oh, well, you know, I'm black and I'm female. And so there's no place for me in this art world. But, you know, when I was maybe 18 or 19 and hold on to my little sketchbook and scared to death and going into New York Comic Con, like, I want to show my artwork, but I don't think it's good enough because I'm not good enough. And but I really like comics, and I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first time going to a really big show, I saw Coran Grant, Sanford Green, Aletha Martinez, who was the first brown woman who I saw sitting behind a table and inking Iron Man. I was like, "There she was. That's her job. That's her <laughs> job. That's not." her you know like oh yeah well I do this on like Saturdays and then yeah they're like no that is her job and then Gail Simone and then Celia Kyle and then Lou Small Jr and then meeting people like David Mack and Neil Adams and Brian Stelfreeze they're all so welcoming and kind and they're saying look you know the path that you're about to walk is a very difficult one but if you're serious which it sounds like you are try this out and see if this works for you so I want to be able to do that for other artists because it's scary, <laughs> you know, like there's no guarantee that even if you go to art school, that you're going to be a successful artist. But if you know the different paths that you can take, then you can kind of make more of an informed decision when you start, you know, scratching the surface and looking into the business fully. It's not just, oh, well, I'm just going to draw pretty pictures and I don't have to worry about it. you know it's okay is this an industry that I really want to be in and as far as comics it's a very difficult industry not necessarily because the people in it are difficult or or are there any gatekeepers or anything like that it's because it's very very demanding you are doing a lot of work and people seem to be under the impression that if you're drawing spider-man you're getting that spider-man money when you do the comic not necessarily so (laughs) And so there are a lot of artists who do different kinds of art and then do comics as uh, something that they love and enjoy. So uh, someone like 
Neil Adams, for instance, who has been around for quite a while, in addition to doing comics, he also does storyboarding because storyboarding for commercials and films is very, very similar to storyboarding a comic. And so he gets to kind of do both things, which is very similar in execution and can do comics because he loves it. And it's not to say that you can't get paid doing comics. You know, there are lots of, there are many jobs in the comic book world from editor to letterer and even some of the more administrative or oversight jobs where you're still interacting with artists and you're still interacting with people who are creative, but you are not necessarily making the thing. Mm-hmm. So I think for, for brown folks, a lot of times they stop themselves. They don't give themselves the psychological permission to even try because they think there is no place for them here. But I am telling you from being on the inside that there are a lot of black, Latino, you know, uh, Latinx. Like there are a lot of folks here and the, these companies are trying to expand and they're trying to change from a genuine place, not from a pandering place, because if it were the case, then they wouldn't keep trying. They were like, mm-hmm. right, you're going to do this no not gonna buy okay never mind going back to what we were doing before that's not what they're doing they're 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 gonna keep trying and it's because they genuinely want to change they they had more female editorial staff at marvel in the past 10 years than in the company's entire history because there was an active decision to say well who's the best bring them in right that's good you know, like and, and then seeing what sticks and not just keeping someone there because they are a woman or because they are a minority. It's like your numbers will show whether or not this investment was worthwhile, but they gave them a shot. And so this is, that's a very long, long answer to your question. <laughs> oh, I love no, that. I love you that. even running, you answered like, because we came up with questions, of course, before you came, you answered like six questions <laughs> that I think we had within just letting you go. So in my head, I'm like, well, we can check that off and check that off. <laughs> but I love what you mentioned about going into a store and you're basically seeing art. Because I've told other people that when I got into cosplaying, mm-hmm. um, and just activated that right brain times 10. I'm like, man, why did I get away from painting? Why did I get away from all this stuff that I like? Yeah. Because it is it is what is a passion of mine. And I don't like being in my gray cube. I like doing all of this. So yes. when I was talking to my son who loves to draw and not doing to him what I felt like my military family and other people did to me where they're just like, cause I was dancing too, girl. They were like, I, my goal was to be a background dancer for Janet Jackson. Uh, yes. I'm still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jan, Janet's still out there. So there is not. still time, okay? But um, just anything artistic is what I wanted to do. But then you get hit with those talks about what's realistic. And that's right. where that phrase starving artist comes from. Because they're like, mm, right. you're going to starve. But I think when you are that creative, just in general, no matter what you do, yeah. we almost don't care what it takes. We're just okay. like, I'm going to this con. I'm going to illustrate this. I'm going to do that. That's right. So I love that you mentioned that about the store because I told my son that because I did not want him to drink that Kool-Aid that the world's going to give you because they're going to expect to put you in a box, especially as a young black boy. They're going to want you to put you in this box. And I'm like, you don't have to, you can literally draw your way out of that box because again, these logos you're looking at, um, even how a car looks, all of this is about the aesthetic first buildings. I was like, what do you think these architects make? Right. Like you have to sit down trying to get him into more realism because he likes to draw, you know, fantasy characters. And I said, hey, yes. why don't you do this? And just to diversify your bond, because Absolutely. I'm wanting you to be able to be a jack of all trades, be able to do a little bit of everything in this area. Right. That way, like you said, you're not stuck because it's like, I can do the storyboard for this, but still work on my own project, but then still be ready for this too. And not being Absolutely. afraid of that. And then seeing one wonderful POCs like you killing what you're doing because you're killing it like if you've never been feeling yourself you should feel yourself (laughs) because i know nobody would be able to tell me anything halfway can't now let alone if i was you okay (laughs) god knew so (laughs) so it's really great to see you out here and to have you be so approachable because like you said when people come to you with the kids and I literally push my kid because in front of people, because the first thing we do at cons, I'm like, let's find the black owned, where are they at? Especially when they, they get younger and younger at these booths, because here in Cleveland, yeah. it's like 200 bucks or something like that, Chris, and you can yeah. have a booth. 
something wow. like that. It's it's cheap. So I was like, okay, we're going to get you a booth. We're going to yeah. put your art on little coasters, t-shirts, something. We can do yeah. this. So to put them in front of people that are like, look, I, I stepped out on faith. I did this scared. I didn't think I was ready. Um, I didn't think it was good enough because he won't let me see stuff sometimes too. He'll be drawing something and I'm like, mama wants to see because I'm like, I'm not going to critique because I don't, I'm a good painter. I don't feel like I can draw and I know that's weird to say. So I understand what you mean, but you, you get it. So with him, I'm like, I don't, to me, it looks fine. So, but in his head, it's not. And that was a question that you kind of touched on a little bit when you were speaking. Cause I'm like, well, how do, how does she know when she's done? How do you know this is it for the cover that you want to submit and usually when usually when I'm working on things if I have too much time I will nitpick at it ad infinitum I will I'm like oh I can always fix this I can do that I have to give myself a deadline Mm -hmm. and it's harder when it's your own stuff but when you create a space where you're posting, and that's why I have a group, a group on Facebook called Dr. Fu's Lab for people to post, just, just post, like just post your stuff. It doesn't matter if it's scribbles, incomplete, fully rendered, your Kickstarter, whatever it is, keep posting because you get better through the repetition. It's just, you're, you're creating a pathway from your mind to your hand. But if you keep going back over the same thing, sometimes you won't see your progress. You'll only see what's wrong and then you'll end up Mm. changing what's right. And so having a space, uh, I think for me, I really started to advance when I had a website and I only had like two or three images up there. And I'm like, well, I can't just redraw the same thing and put it up there. (laughs) I'm going to have to do something new now. (laughs) Like I, it, it was it was out in the world and I either had to make it a fully colored piece or do something else. And then in doing something else, I learned from the last piece, like, okay, well, next time I need to draw through my figures. So I know where they connect. I'm not trying to assemble this person in imaginary space. I'm thinking of them like, Uh, I would an action figure and this is a circle here. So this ball joint can only go in this direction and through the shoulder, it exists on this axis here. So now I know that this arm connects across this bar and then thinking uh, like working through my sketches and saying, okay, I'm missing something here, flipping things around because sometimes you'll sketch and your your page will be tilted or you're, you're very right-brained or you're very left-brained and you'll lean a little bit to one side. And when you flip it around, you're kind of allowing the other side of your brain to see maybe what you've missed. So if I'm drawing digitally, I'll flip my image quite a bit so I can see my own mistakes and make my own critique. I almost feel like she should put her cash app up her because this is like Something. gold. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, PJ, come here, get a get a pad, take some notes. This is good. And thank you. And, and I want to. I was thinking about maybe doing classes or starting a podcast where I just give artist tips. Oh, where I was I actually other kidding, artists. son. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just kidding. He heard, his, he heard his name and he came from, he came Aww. running. <laughs> because you know, other artists shared with me their techniques and they they were kind enough to <laughs> Hey PJ. <laughs> they were kind All right, enough to share what it is that they do because you know they're they're not they're not threatened. This isn't a competition. Right. You know, if if I draw really, really well. And then my friend draws really, really well in their style. They have something completely different to bring. And even if we drew exactly alike, then we form Voltron and we save the world. Like that's it. That's like, oh, okay, great. (laughs) We draw very similarly. Let's do a book together. Perfect. You know what I mean? Like you can build bonds with people who are kind of covering the same ground, you know, if you get along philosophically and it doesn't have to be this, oh, they're going to take all the jobs. There's always going to be another job for you to have. There's always going to be another opportunity. And uh, some opportunities are really great ones. Like some of the projects that I've had to, that I've had the pleasure of, of working on, but you know, I have been really fortunate to have just some really, really great teachers and not having gone to school at all. I, I was a music student. Um, yeah, which we need to get into because yeah. 
because I because Brandy had a question about I had a lot of questions because yeah. I'm like it's one thing to know what you know surface level somebody does so then you do some more research AK with me I stalk so I stalked <laughs> you if you admit it if you admit it it doesn't sound so bad you know what I mean <laughs> but I basically joed her if anybody watched uh you I joed her <laughs> and <laughs> girl that show is crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but I'm here for it though. Something, but I, yeah, it's very crazy. Uh, it's very crazy. Like, um, but next episode, yeah, right. It's like, oh my god, yes, I'm still watching. Yes, I'm gonna keep watching. I'm watching all of this tonight, Netflix tonight. Um, so this flu business, like, first of all, when are you gonna do a collab with Lizzo? Because that has to happen now. I, I'm gonna need y'all to to do that because I just get excited when I hear about any woman of color playing something where you just don't normally see us in. Uh, kind of like that violinist, I forget her name, but she used to be in like the Kanye videos, hip hop's one. Oh yeah, you know what I'm uh, talking about. Oh, Marie, yeah. I think Marie. I forget her name. Marie Ben something. I, mean, I, don't I know who you're talking Esperanza about. Esperanza Spalding. Oh, oh she's, yeah, she's like, another one. Yeah. She is like God tier <laughs> over 9,000. <000. laughs> it doesn't make any sense with that. She's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. But like, <laughs> How did that affect you just overall as an artist being introduced to something like that at such a young age? I think it gave me an emotional maturity that I don't think I would have had otherwise. You know, I, I was going through a lot at home with one of my parents being uh, suffering with a mental illness and there was a lot of violence at home. And everybody has, you know, one of those parents that beat their ass, but it was it was really bad, and, and it gave me an opportunity to say, well, you know what, it, whatever is happening here, this sheet music has the thoughts and emotions and and frozen poetry of somebody from 200, 500, a bajillion years ago and what they felt and it's beautiful and they didn't even have electricity and, uh, <laughs> this was it right you know i would look over stevie wonder's sheet music and and i would listen to his music and i would see all the different relationships between the the chords and the colors that he was creating with these different intervals and i'm like there is beauty in the world and then that was how powerful music was where you can feel a certain way and you can listen to a couple of songs and it'll completely change your mind. It's medicine. It, it is medicine for me. And so being able to very keenly articulate, just, I would go, I would go through my drills and I play my scales and I would play all this like classical stuff. And then I would listen to the radio and I would play along as if I were a part of their band. So being able to improvise and, and take all of that training and just be a part of something new, it really, it really set a template for the rest of my life. Where when I read comics and things like that, and I, you know, would look at Wonder Woman and thought, man, if she were left in that car, <laughs> she would have quads like Flojo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Flojo, because <laughs> that was you know, body. Okay. Oh, yeah. The original body, yaddy yaddy. <laughs> now you see what Bruce sees in her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you it's know, funny I because. Didn't... Oh, go ahead. No, I was saying it was funny because uh, I read uh, there's a book called Batman in, in uh, Psychology, and he has this breakdown of all his team members. And when he came to Wonder Woman, he was like, beyond any kind of piercing weapons she does not have a weakness <laughs> like she just doesn't have a weakness and like if she wanted to <laughs> she could just shut the whole thing down you know i'm like yeah, this is true Dude, i mean did you notice in the film her hair her hair was Listen. never undone she Listen. had no speck of dirt <laughs> no <laughs> Uh, and every slow-mo walk, you know, I was looking because I was like, girl, for you not to know nothing about nothing, you know, to have your hair together. Is that what they teach the Amazons? Because <laughs> listen, <laughs> one, you're going to look good. We know that. And then we'll get to everything else. Then we'll get to the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And what skill, what skill <laughs> to be able to whoop somebody's ass and still be like no nothing out of place? Okay. Between well, her and, like between her and Storm. So it's <laughs> and oh, like, 
Oh like, yeah, stole ching, ching, bullets and dirt. Oh, yeah. That, that was probably my favorite part of that film, especially when they said it was no man's land. She was like, girl, bye, I'm going. I'm just like, this movie, I think it was that moment. Where I was like, this movie gave me so much more than what I thought I, I was going to get. And that's when I'm like, I just need to see women all the time now um, yeah. because they did such a good job. So and I'm, the yeah. For the Amazons where they had oh, like- what? You know, they had MMA fighters, they had gymnasts, Ugh. they had yeah, they had bo- a couple boxers. And yeah, everything. and I and I like to look at um uh, the one time I got to be on set one time, and I I so I like to look at the background and and set up and things and yeah. to look at the people scrapping in the background. I was like, you guys are doing stuff for real. Okay. This is yeah. not for play play. You no, guys are no, doing no. your real drills in the back, and I can appreciate the conditioning yeah. of your bodies. How many times it takes to go through this over and over again right. like this was so well cast and th- like again shout out to wonder woman as a whole like that's ugh. well I see not just it. not just the cast of one the wonder Woman, the amazons of the cast of wonder woman but mm-hmm. also the the cast of the dora milaje and black panther mm-hmm. you know, here, these women mm-hmm. are stunt women of oh, all boy, different boy. calibers and damn <laughs> not they were again around. together dude yeah do you know that i started going on etsy and looking up south african jewelry makers to get my endebele yeah <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna dress like this going to the grocery store y'all I got listen <laughs> i got my face paint i'm ready like it was funny like I would cosplay as a bunch of different things I kind of do like a casual cosplay like okay can I leave the convention and walk five blocks away and still be okay wearing this ish kind of yeah can I still be comfortable in this after six hours (laughs) so (laughs) every other costume you know it's been like oh hey you're this person that's cool I like your you know whatever every time I dressed as a Dora Milaje People moved out of the <laughs> way. <laughs> okay, I Moses. Mm. Uh, just ride with it. <laughs> okay, the power. I was like, this is not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to get from, I had to help someone get from one side of a convention to the other in Denver. And Denver Comic Con is huge it's it's i think it's as big as san diego it's really massive oh, wow the convention is it's just it's a huge building just wide and you can barely see the numbers at the other end and so we had to get all the way to the other side and so i picked up my staff i was like all right let's go and we're just <laughs> weaving through the crowd and people are just like that looks like a real staff and i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no it is so I'm doing mashups too like shuri as adora milaje oh geez. i'm so here for anybody doing a mashup like i've only done one but i'm still here for every time i see somebody else doing it because i'm just like oh this is so good it's something original it literally it is it's and then you know they like Doctor strange yes <laughs> come on I can't wait to see that. I'm going to double t- tap the heck out of that picture. Oh, man. <laughs> She's going to be like, this is my Joe. That's what you can just, that'll be my nickname. <laughs> like so we talked earlier, you mentioned earlier uh, the effects like shows like Lovecraft uh, Craft Country mm-hmm. has. And I think, you know, between me and Brandy, we probably know what your favorite episode is. But what was... She might what surprise was, us. She might surprise us. You know, what was your favorite episode? Ooh, it's so tough because each episode took you on a ride like I I, by the end of each one I needed water like it it became like a family event like every Sunday my husband and his and his mom would come over I'd make dinner or she'd bring dinner and we'd hang out a little bit and then we'd watch the show and then afterwards it'd be like okay (laughs) Yeah, that was the best thing. Yeah, I need a drink. Um, <laughs> right, I'm like, I need therapy. <laughs> right, the Diana episode alone was just like, oh god, I don't know if we gonna make this. <laughs> not, I mean, not, I don't know if we're gonna make it. 
<laughs> okay, after what was that? Was that episode three in Letty's house? Yeah, like, oh. on the bottom floor of Letty's house. I was like, is this what it's going to be like? <laughs> oh yeah, after she told them to get the fuck out of her house, I was like, "Whoo, child!" I was like, "You were nothing to play I felt, with." I felt all of that. I felt all. I felt that on so many levels. But then I was like, "Okay, this was probably because you know how a lot of shows do. They'll they'll have their one or two deep episodes for the season." I was like, "Well, this is probably our deep episode because we just started, and the rest will be fun fantasy." And then even by episode seven, you're like, "I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this with y'all every week." And once they hit me with the Negro spirituals, oh. I was Listen, like, it, 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 it's so it's hard. It, that's yeah, that's probably a loaded. It's hard to pick a favorite. So really if she's struggling, I get it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's more like moments, mm -hmm. just all these different moments that sort of popped up for me. So like, just getting thrown into the second episode with moving on up. I was like, what is yeah, yeah. Wait, this is, <laughs> this is the start? What? Why are they so happy? I'm here for it, though. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but this is great. <laughs> then, You're like, almost looking at them like, were you here for last episode? Like, y'all good, right? Did y'all forget right? what actually I'm like, did I miss something? <laughs> Right, just the surprise. Did we miss an episode? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Christina and William. I, was oh. like, I, di I didn't see it coming. I know some people anticipated it and they and they knew, but I was just like, I just, it's yeah. just, I just, I'm so glad that I only had very minimal spoilers because I, I, I got to work on set mm -hmm. for for Lovecraft and I. You know, I got to see Topsy and Bopsy's screen test. It's scarier in person. I believe it. I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I wouldn't doubt. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, that's, that's the last thing I doubt. But then like in true black fashion, which I can't stand about black Twitter, but they're like as scary as this was, they're like, them little girls was jigging. I'm like, what in they? <laughs> it's like, I'd be scared, but I'm up there like, okay. Y'all dance. Y'all was in sync. Y'all was sure. in sync. Yeah, y'all, y'all getting it, but also terrified. Especially right? when um there was a scene that very much reminded me of a scene uh in Nosferatu where the shadow mm. claw is coming on the wall and it's doing that business with his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when Topsy, I think, was like that close to touching the back of her head. Normally, that's not a thing in scary movies that gets me, but I was in the corner of my couch. Like, I <laughs> can't, I can't. <laughs> like, I already don't like scary things like that anyway, but I'm typically, it's not because I'm a Freddy cat, but I, I typically believe so much spiritually. So when you start mm. getting into curses, the mm. first 10 minutes of that episode scared the crap out of me when the cop cursed her. I almost yeah. went like how my um, 101 year old grandma is like, uh, go ahead and mute it. You're going to bring spirits in and you get kind of <laughs> very, you get very scary you acting like, I don't know, what, the girl, the salt. Show. I got, I got very skeleton key. I was like, I, I need a candle. I need salt. <laughs> there was a lot of, for me, there was a lot of oh. like, I'm clenching like pissed. I'm like, this bastard did not just spit on this child. Did he just right. spit and trip this child? Like, how was the actress feeling after all of that? You know? Oh, yeah. Definitely <laughs> thinking about that. I, went, I very rarely do it, but I went to the girl's Instagram page. Uh, and I was just like, first oh, of all, yeah, I was like, things you did, that. Because that episode was a lot. Second of all, are you okay? Like, is everything okay? <laughs> <Are you crazy? laughs> and it's funny because, like, Matt is actually a really sweet guy man who played Lancaster mm -hmm. he's awesome he's super super kind and I was like I it was funny because I didn't get to see a lot of his scenes and I, I didn't I knew that he was uh, a villain because I was drawing all of the charcoal drawings of of Dee being cursed but she couldn't speak about it so she drew it so someone would be able to know what happened to her mm -hmm. and so um he had messaged me on Instagram like it was really cool seeing me in comic book form. <laughs> we started having conversations, and he has this really awesome daughter. And I was like, I can't wait to see your character. And he's just like, You're you're not gonna like it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't like it. I mean, not you know, just he's such a bad guy. And and then he takes off his shirt, and he's got this like dead body attached, and it's just like. Bleh, bleh. Yeah. I mean, they just, they just, there were so many questions. And I was like, I need season two. Yes. Need it now. 
and three. Just go oh, ahead and yeah, we like, can't we can't do this. I'm we like, you don't you don't get to one and done us on this. Okay. You don't get yeah. to. This isn't like Watchmen. A, this isn't right. Watchmen. Like, but even you, with that, I very much got like crazy ex girlfriend. Like, you don't just get to leave me. You don't get <laughs> to give all of this to me and it's good and you just go like you told no. Paul Po to leave. You leave me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you and me will never part. Keep going <laughs> with these series. Like I want it. I want it all. I and Chris and I were talking about it because we had a whole episode where we're going off about the show, and I think episode three was that um indiana jones just adventure mm-hmm. and that was probably the first episode funny enough episode two didn't make me like tear up episode three almost did because i mm-hmm. when they're running across the bridge that's disappearing i was like i've always wanted to see us like this to see us do puzzles mm-hmm. to be smart to be fearless to yeah. be all these to be multifaceted to be yes. seen and that and, and this was the talk. first show yeah. in a long time whereas the blurs we are i'm like this is, this is what i wanted like buffy to be right like yeah. i could so get into buffy but i'm like but if buffy had had a whole bunch of kindreds instead i would have <laughs> been like over the moon could you imagine like a black willow come on like yeah, yeah. and that's exactly what misha wanted with this she wanted to do everything she was like, she I just that. want to well, be she able did. to. <laughs> she hit her button. Like, what are we giving them? Everything. Do right? it. She, pulled know, that, <laughs> she pulled were, a Disney. She pulled a Disney. She pulled a Disney. Those we're scenes were hats all. off to, you know, those films to just, I mean, they built that set. Okay. Like they built an entire labyrinth of concrete and plaster. And some of it was caved over and some of it was exposed so they could see uh, over it. But they built it in a slant so that as they got closer and closer to the door, the water got higher and higher. Oh, and God. And even wow. that scene that you're talking about where they're running across the, the plank, that was built 20 feet off the ground <sighs> and like a very thin wooden beam. So they fell off. Like. You know, I'm a dork because I'm literally about to cry about this because it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you cry during romantic comedies? No. I'll tell you who I cry. <laughs> I cry about geeky stuff like this. Cause I'm like, oh my God, that's just, yeah. it's so cool. And it means so much. It, it, it really does. And it, it says, you know what, guess what? You're worthy. You are this, you are not limited to the archetypes that are displayed to you in media. Because right. It started creating this weird background loop that, oh, well, that's not black. It's like, it's not because I know a lot of people. Right. <laughs> Who this describes. I was like, my sister is an engineer. She's a real life Shuri. She's got two master's degrees and she can't tell me what she does or she'll have to kill me. Like, <laughs> right. So like... I mean, she deals with like hypersonic weapons, like some really high level engineering stuff. And these nerdy archetypes fit her to a T. She's still cool, but, she, you know, right. she's not just limited to this cardboard cutout that we get fed. This is what it means to be Black. And so I think, mm-hmm. you know, what you're feeling is like, yes, this is what I hoped for and dreamed for and saw the potential for us to be and now it can continue it can now that it works and it's successful yes please more of that absolutely you know and I'm I just just to be a part of that I was like I only had a little bite to play but I'm super happy to have (laughs) (laughs) she's like I'm just happy to be here you guys (laughs) (laughs) Well, and we spoke before we started recording, and uh, I had a quick question to ask her. I had to ask her about the Hippolyta shout out. Shout out! I just <laughs> I had to. Um, it was a moment that I I knew immediately who she was talking about. Let's just say for number one, Hippolyta story arc. Damn, oh, boy, <laughs> you know. Uh, just watching her in in, in episode or uh, uh, 1921 rewind, rewind. Mm-hmm. and it wasn't until Tick says you got to keep the door open, you got to keep the door open for you, for D, and and I'm just like, and she reacted as a mother would react, like because mm-hmm. she was getting ready to just lose it just a little bit, and then she she called on the spirits. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, and then they um, called on Goku too because I wasn't ready. I was like, <laughs> what? Because somebody posted a picture and I hadn't seen it yet. And they're just like, okay, episode like eight spoilers without spoiling or what have you. And I was like, someone's leveling up. I'm like, what? Are, <laughs> like, I don't get it. Just and then when it time. happened, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. So, and then I love that her yeah. hair stayed like that. Yeah. I, that was probably my favorite thing. Like she comes back and I was like, oh. And it was it's almost like so it was, real. it wasn't even a question. It, it, it wasn't even, a, it was just like, oh, I need to dye my hair. I'm like, no, she just left it as is. It, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> and I think that just yeah. speaks more into that episode of being like, this is who I am. Like it, it made me want to call my ex-husband and cuss him out. Like, I feel this <laughs> episode. This is for women. <laughs> it just, it makes you hopeful. It makes you angry. It made you want to cry, but um, yeah, your shout out girl again. That would have been a moment they wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. Everybody going straight cried. to voicemail. Act <laughs> <laughs> brand new. Cried. Yep. I just when uh, it was a decision that JP Jones and Misha Green, JP Jones is the props master who I worked with directly, who made just so much of what you saw from the Ori to Hippolyta's weapons to D's notebook. He was he was making all of the that things. is so cool. Um, he is absolutely brilliant and he's worked on so many films like Ford versus Ferrari and Logan Ooh. and just he is absolutely incredible and just is responsible for so many little things that the actors have to interact with to be practical. And he just he teaches himself how to make these things and produces them for films. Another self taught. So, yeah. Yeah. You guys are badass. It's, it's <laughs> just, almost that's the best route though, you know? because nobody tells you what the standard is so you don't have any problem changing it and i think sometimes i mean there is absolutely something to learning a craft and learning what was but then innovating comes from having a different dips discipline and a different perspective and saying well i'm going to bring the the new view that i have over here because i'm seeing it from another side i'm seeing it as a scientist i'm seeing it as a um there was a writer who was an entomologist and he would create these really crazy characters that were insect based because of his research and all of his studies, but they were so convincing. You could just, you could see it from his description because he had intimate knowledge of bugs and how they operated from the chitin to their chemical um, interactions. So bringing different disciplines and, and innovating is taking the standard and raising it, elevating it and changing it so that there's a new normal now with what it is that they've brought in. So sometimes when you are too grounded in what was, you are afraid to break it because you have these constraints in your mind. Well, it doesn't work like that or it, mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't do that. But if you learn more than one, then you're automatically going to come from a new perspective and man just seeing how many different kinds of folks worked on this from the from the costume designers to storyboard artists you know eric yamamoto and uh brian mckee you know, japanese and black storyboard artist who worked with jordan peele directly there was a a, a concentrated effort to look for blacks and minorities to work on this and JP having worked on so many different films you know whispered to me at one point this is the most brown faces I have ever seen on a production this is crazy <laughs> and I was like I get to be here <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah definitely and part of history in my book because girl <sighs> Man, they just, and there was just such a care, you know, it, it wasn't just, it wasn't just, um, oh, hey, we're, we're going to give you a shout out, you know, because I'm, I'm not SAG, I'm not union, they couldn't really list me as someone in the credits. So this is a way for them to say, like, we appreciate you, Fua. And don't get me to crying again. Okay, I just, <laughs> 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 you know, and then to be able to share this with my dad, you know, mm -hmm. who thought that there was just no place for us in art and just, you know, even if we tried really hard, we would only be accepted as half is okay. Oh, dear, see, goes but, brandy. but the onions <laughs> up, PJ, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good. Dad, this is a real job. 
you know, like there is a place for us and we made it. Say yeah. a real job. It yeah. is a real job. <laughs> it's a real job because it, it does. It speaks to it speaks to our people to say that you know we have a place. We have so much to give, so mm-hmm. much to offer. And I mean, oh my God. Just like yeah. just like me and Brandy were talking about Lovecraft. Like the stuff we were seeing. I'm like, I'm I'm at work breaking stuff down to folks. I'm like, who was that? I'm like, well, let me tell you. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It wasn't until like later on I started catching it because I was like, oh, this is going to be a thing that they're doing now. So then I felt like it was a game. So I was like, okay. Yeah. And then the first person I recognized was Betsy on the motorcycle. And I was like, I got this one. So yeah. <laughs> that was super exciting. Yeah. And I also put the whole series in a category of content that I'm basically going to force upon my child. Because I feel like as a parent, that's what you do when you're a good parent. You're like, you're going to watch this because I liked it. Like if mm-hmm. I like The Nightmare Before Christmas, you're going to like it. So, <laughs> which he just thought was okay, but I showed it to him too young, but I digress. <laughs> he likes it now, but he was like three and I was like, is this great? And I was like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> he was like, what are they doing to Santa Claus? Pretty much. I was like, no, they're cool. They're cool. They're going to sing. It's great. Um, but I put Lovecraft Country in that category of, A, when you're about like probably 14 15 I'm going to make you watch the show because this is incredible and it's just great to plant that seed in an adolescent age so people can see themselves and like I said just being multifaceted because we don't get it enough especially Mm -hmm. when you have a kid who is artistic and I want you to know that there's not one way to be black like and and for a show to do it in this way and to give us that fantasy adventure because They've been putting us out there, but we do get a lot of heavy content and it's a lot of drama. It's a lot of, you know, the boy is going to get shot at the end. It's a lot of documentaries, which still do important work Um, going over with the Central Park Five and everything like those Mm. are important Mm. series to do. But I'm also like, I want the other side of the coin, too, because real shit, that stuff's depressing. (laughs) It's real. It's real, but it's depressing. It is. And it makes you feel like, why bother they're trying because I'm going to get stricken down instead of it being like guess what you came from people who are made of incredibly durable material who faced what they faced and they were still excellent right you know and and, but that takes showing someone not just surviving but thriving Exactly. And I don't feel like we, we have enough stories where we're thriving in yeah. different fields. So I'd, I'd love to see mm. shows where it's a POC kind of sex in the city. It's giving us um, a living single 2.0 type of feel. It's giving us mm. Lovecraft country in different breakdowns for the teens on a CW show and for the adults, like on something like HBO. So I'd want to see more of that because I find myself not even being as interested in the show now if I don't see myself now when I was younger I too much didn't care but I think between uh being older not being overseas anymore since that's where I grew up so then when you come back to the states and then I have my kid it reframed my mind when I'm watching content I'm like I don't Mm -hmm. see me so I don't get a lot of these stories Mm -hmm. I understand it because I've had a lot of friends from all different backgrounds but I don't understand what this means to me how does this hit for me and then what is my son going to see so now I have to pick books and content and things where I'm like well read about yourself or see something for yourself so the work all of you do is just I feel like top tier um, y- y'all just like with teachers don't get paid enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did, I feel like y'all Definitely. need to Definitely. have that Kardashian money for what you do because you could set up just a, a generation of people that automatically feel from a very young age, I can and mm-hmm. I will. And that's important. And usually that comes with uh, better pay comes with ownership. And what I, I realized that, you know, in working on these different jobs, there is a difference between, you know, doing something where you gain residuals, which is you know, money that you generate over time and work for hire. And even though in comic book instances, it's not supposed to be work for hire, it is, which means you get paid for the time that you've worked on it, usually a flat rate. And then that's it. Uh, sometimes you'll get a buyer's incentive where you'll get one half of you know 2.5 percent on sales after 50,000 and then you know different different companies will give you different uh incentives and things like that so 
it's not that they're being vampiristic, but they own these intellectual properties. So in working on all of these different projects, uh, I realized at some point, you know, that I don't own anything. And so that's why I started creating and writing a story of my own to kind of cover some of the things that I feel and I think and I research and want to say through my artwork instead of just allowing the projects that I've worked on and their visions to speak for me. Exactly. And congratulations, by the way, Miss Kickstarter. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about more. Let's talk more about that project. Uh, the Aquarius, the Book of Merg. Tell us yes. about that. Uh, it's a modern retelling of mermaid myths and legends from all over the world. And I, um, I really, I really started digging into just, I've always loved myths and legends and, and things like that. But then I really started digging and looking and asking a lot of questions like, are mermaids just a European thing? And it's okay if, if it is, you know, because chupacabras are, you know, a Latino thing and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I really started to look and saw in ancient Babylonia, they had Adergatus. And in Heliopolis, there was also Astaroth, and she was the patron deity of their city. And a patron deity is someone who is the spiritual guardian and protector of the city. So there are these giant statues that are erected to this deity who looks over and protects the land. And this was true in, you know, South Africa and Ghana and West Africa, East Africa and South America and Canada and Nova Scotia and uh, a lot of the Aboriginal and even some of the um, Algonquin tribes. They had these water panthers, beaver people who gave them tobacco, uh, halfway people who lived underneath Uh, lakes and frozen lakes and just all of these different stories that I'd never heard of because a lot of times um, Native American stories are oral traditions. They're sacred. They're sacred like songs. They're things that you protect and you pass on, but sometimes anthropologists will come and they'll share the stories with them and uh, it'll be translated and kept. And so I just started digging into all of these different archives and trying to find as many as I could and start going, I started going into Native American museum archives and digging up documentaries and digging up different, uh, different papers. And even in Japan, like looking in these old like Tokugawa gazettes talking about a 900 year old nun who accidentally ate mermaid meat when she was 14 and stopped aging. And she slowed down her aging process and she was preaching in the middle of a square in Kyoto about what it's like to live this long and see so many lifetimes and some of the things that she experienced. And, you know, who knows if it's true, but I thought, man, it would be cool to find a common thread or common river between all of these different stories because we are in very divided times right now. But I think I want to show the threads between us because my family, my community is nerddom. (laughs) And when I was a uh, a part of like the, the hip hop community, and I saw the power that it had in the underground hip hop arena, where people, you know, from Korea were were bringing their 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 battle DJs, and you had you know German b boys and uh, you had Canadian graffiti artists just coming together and putting all of these different things that made them different aside, and just brought their skills, just brought their their love of this craft together. I thought, man, I love and miss that. And I want to bring all of my different skills together and all the different stories and my travels uh, as an artist and traveling to all these different conventions and telling people about what I plan to do. And, And then they would share with me, oh, I'm from Hawaii and we have a legend about this, or, oh, I'm from this tiny English town. And there's a legend of this long strip of land that went out a couple of miles that, people theorize was a dragon that was defeated by a baker or 
<laughs> That's the story right there. <laughs> Three part series right there. I'm sold. Right. <laughs> I am right? sold. Oh, or looking up a news article in 2012 in you know in Zimbabwe where construction on a dam was stopped because the workers were attacked by injuzu. It's like it's okay. Let's let's stop for a second. People stopped working completely. Stopped working, getting paid because they thought they were attacked by a mermaid. Oh, man. And then they hired new workers who didn't believe in Injuzu, and they went down there and they came back. They said, "Look, we don't know what that is, but we're not going back." And then they hired <laughs> white workers who not, hadn't heard of Injuzu, and they didn't believe in it at all. They went down there and they were like, "Look, y'all just gonna have to pay us for the day because no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> we're not messing with that." <laughs> <laughs> so they, the Minister of Water, had to create a beer a particular type of beer and pour it down there and do a ceremony. And he said, you know, I don't really believe in Injuzu, but the others do. And whatever just, was down there was appeased and it left. So all of these crazy stories braided through history, just like uh, seeing fiction and historical references in Lovecraft country mm -hmm. and it working and it gelling and people receiving it, it really validated my ideas. I'm like, yes. Yes, this works. Ha ha. I don't, uh, <laughs> my ideas aren't crummy. <laughs> <laughs> They're not crummy. I can just see you in the corner, like, yes, winning. <laughs> I don't know. My inner monologue is uh, incredibly loud and then incredibly tiny. Like, ha ha. Like, <laughs> I've noticed that and I'm not mad at it. I really do enjoy that. That's a little mini series for you by itself. Just steer. <laughs> really Big ridiculous oh man. oh man and so i i'm also going to be making music for this as part of the story so in some places cool. there won't be any dialogue at all and they'll just be music to tell the story because that's what's happening in the scene someone's either singing a song or they're listening to something on the radio and, and it's informing you about what's going on or one of the sirens is singing and it's it's an incantation or a spell or it's a trick or it's it's something and it, and it sounds is. dreamy by the way again i was stalking you <laughs> and i was listening to y'all laughing uh, no, I know i'm you. really recording like a right by her house <laughs> like after we're done i'll just, window, just like... hear like a knock <laughs> hey girl remember that's right you want a blanket it's cool. yeah. <laughs> I know you cold girl it's winter but the music <laughs> it's hauntingly beautiful and when I looked at your illustrations for this I was like these seem like some badass mermaids these just don't seem like um and no shade to Disney because I love it oh Ariel. sure I sing those um, songs please but <laughs> I'm also like ooh, these are a little like sugar spice everything nice but also on the naughty list and I love that I get all of that just from looking at the poses that you put some of them in because I told Chris I was like I plan on if I don't get too tired because I know how I do I plan on doing like a soft closet cosplay of uh one of them that I felt oh you you I like this so I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I whip together tonight girl but listening to the music uh yeah you're you are talented and i think we're probably going to just keep saying that while we have you on here we're just oh, yeah, talented definitely. talented 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 because there's just no other uh i need a thesaurus because i can't think of anything else to call you and i hope you're just proud of what you do because your talent matters and it's needed and i'm i'm obsessed he's been obsessed mm -hmm. You yeah. definitely have a new, and then let me stop lying. I probably was obsessed with you maybe 2013 or 14. I didn't know you did this cover. And I saw this beautiful black woman lay it out and caution tape all on her. And I remember I screenshot it and I put it on my IG at the time because I just got on IG around that time. And I was like, we need more bad bitches like this. I need to see more stuff like this in my, my nerd content. So fast forward to now where I was like, she, she did that? Like I was admiring her work years ago and had had no clue so this is Aww. exciting for me that's why chris was like don't nerd out too much too late <laughs> yeah, co coming from one of the nerds he's like don't nerd out too much that's how you know you so you'd probably go overboard when chris has to tell you hey bring it down a thousand <laughs> <laughs> thank you i just i get 
I get really hard on myself because I just, I want to do the best job I possibly can. So I'm always kind of tearing what I do down just a little, little bit. And I have to kind of stop it and say, okay, look, like I used to keep all of my comic covers and all the books that I worked on up. And at one point, I think I took them down because I felt like I was getting too comfortable in what it is I had accomplished. But I, I really have trouble being satisfied with what I've done I'm like it's not enough okay I'm just getting started okay I learned that now I, I, I need to to move on and and sometimes I just have to sit back and say okay you know what it's okay to say that you've done a good job <laughs> you're, you're not yeah. like you're I not think that's a common yourself right I think that's a common thing that most artists deal with you know you know I, yeah. Brandy's a painter I I, I dabbled in, in drawing a little bit Dude, and it was all call me a painter. I don't want anybody in my inbox like paint me some. <laughs> it's been years. I paint for my pleasure. <laughs> but but we, we well, you you do painting. even even now when I write, I'm just like I can write something and get a synopsis of what of the story that I want to write, and then give it a week, two weeks, and come back. I'm like I don't like how that turned out. You know, I think well, it's an cool. artist thing that we just kind of we're our own worst quit- critic, as my mother would say. She's like we're we're our own worst worst critic. And You're right about that. I'll do cosplays last minute so I don't give myself the opportunity to tear it up. Oh, so geez. when I did when I did Penguin, that oh. day was the test run for makeup. Oh yeah, girl. Now that we're best friends, I'll send you stuff. Um, but that, it's, it's actually that, great. That day was the test run for the prosthetic in the makeup. I didn't do it before then because I know myself and I know I would have been like, this is ugly. I'm not even going mm. and, you know, just tear it up. And, and yeah. then even after I did it and having people that have seen me at these things over and over again, say, I didn't recognize you. And I'm like, come on, you knew it was me. I, it's been months. So now I can appreciate it more than I did in March. Um, right. But I, like you said, I think we all have levels of doing it, but that's also what's important about knowing each other and telling people, like we call Chris all the time, our fearless leader. We're like, you do a lot. You are phenomenal in what you do. Your voice is butter. Your voice is butter too, girl. I'm mad. I'm like, did y'all both like sell somebody else's soul for the voice? Like what I, what I gotta sacrifice? <laughs> like what I got to do? Cause y'all sound good, but you guys do incredible work. So you should feel very proud about um, just what you do. And if you hadn't been operating in your purpose, Chris, this all wouldn't have happened. So it would not. this is, this is, <laughs> this you is, said it would now. Literally, it's literally <laughs> like a, it was a calling. I'm like, Aww. something had to give. And uh, I'm so glad I, I gave into it. I'm just like, I love talking about comics. I love talking about the geek culture that has been in my life, all my life. And mm. I'm like, geez, I can wax poetic about so much stuff. Like I, I used to joke. No, it's not even a joke. It's the truth. I used to tell my mom, I'm like, I am horrible at calculus. Yet mm-hmm. I can break down the entire Gene Gray and, and Scott Summers bloodline. I <laughs> well, <laughs> we all have our talents and and yeah, other right. areas. <laughs> it's like I don't have a bad memory when it comes to stuff I care about so I can list Mm. off the order when everybody died in Buffy but I can't tell you (laughs) I can't tell you about this uh, class or this that which I don't know I can't even tell you what some of the lights stand for in my car when they're going off like I don't know but (laughs) a light's on I don't know (laughs) but something you care about and you're like let me tell you a little bit about this or let me let me really give you the information about vibranium that you didn't ask about but I'm going to give to you because it's important that you know this (laughs) <laughs> just operating in your gift and, and what we're good at in this type of even a situation how we're talking this means something to people I know you get people talking to you and reaching out uh, liking the show loving um what you do too and yeah it's really cool to be a part of something like this and to keep this nerd company going oh yeah I mean, it's been great to speak to people who are fans of the show and we nerd about nerd out together about these different things because i'm definitely a, a fan of the show and then to be able to have worked on it it's just it, it's really a it's a privilege you know i i when i uh got hired last june i want to say uh, i was living about 15 minutes away from where they were filming 
So I got to work on set and be on call, but I also got to work on set and had to be on call. (laughs) 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 But it was great. It it was such a wonderful learning experience. And then, and then it was good. It was like, oh, please be good. Cause you know, you don't know, like you get to be a part of these different projects and you're like, oh, please, please. My (laughs) name is a part of this. Please, please be a good show. Be a good show. Right. Right. Yes. (laughs) Was uh, great. Really you know, you got the. We need a like. Your middle name is Midas, cause baby. <laughs> everything. When I tell everything. you don't miss, it was like, oh, she blows her own glass vases, and she <laughs> she beatboxes, and she almost cured cancer, but she's still working on it. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not doing enough. I was like, after researching more about you, I was like, she just let me know subliminally, I ain't shit. So I'm definitely gonna, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do better. Because she's, I was like, you're, you're amazing. So I'm, I'm probably oh, always going to be a person in your corner, like very sweet. over hyping and cheerleading because you do, you do it all girl, especially everything with music. And I was reading about Raphael Sadiq and you being able to <sighs> work in those circles. Yeah. It, bl- it was blowing <sighs> my mind. I, I'm just what? like, yeah. Most people say Jack all trades or Jane all trades. Like she literally is yeah, a Jane like, of all trades. Some people like, say it and they, they're they good at like two things. They're like, I bake and I sew. And you're like, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you about her. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about Miss Richardson. Okay. Cause there's a list of things that she does and then not to just do them, but to excel in areas to do well, to be on Broadway, like girl. I, I, amazing. Yeah, I, I never would have thought that you know because you know being in the geek culture world you know i see stuff like Dwayne mcduffie you know may he rest in peace you know but having degrees in science and then he's right. like ah but i chose to leave to do to write stories right. like static and justice league unlimited and i'm like he left that to do yeah. that because he loved it you yeah. know and then here i'm you know we're there, we're out there, you know, and then reading your stuff and, and just coming across, I'm like, oh yeah, I was following her work. And then I'm like, oh, she did that. Oh, she yeah. did that. Oh, she, she did that too? Man. Damn. <laughs> and then just, and then seeing so much where it's like the self-taught, the self-taught artist, the stuff. So I'm like, of course, <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course she's self-taught. Why, why wouldn't she be? She came down here in a pod, actually. She was found in a field. Because yeah. she's not real. <laughs> she's not I'm real. Too broke to go to college. <laughs> right. I know that's right. <laughs> oh, college. Man, I was, what is that? I was <laughs> too the soldier broke. boy voice. Man, I, I was. I mean, when I didn't have a place to stay, I was a teenager. I was still in high school. So I was like, listen, whatever it is I do, I better be good at it because I will literally go hungry. Like I was, I was always very eager to learn. I, um, I would take a secretarial job because the computer had that I was working at and and answering phones had Photoshop on it. And I was like, I'm going to take my lunch breaks and I'm going to try not to get crumbs on the keyboard and I'm going to learn how to use this (laughs) and try to incorporate it with my job so that I can utilize this when I have a moment to work on something you know, that's mine, I want to, I don't know how to work digitally on this thing, but I do, not, do know how to use watercolor because watercolor is cheap and you can buy it once and then reuse it. It's not like acrylic where you're like, oh, it's dry. That's the end of that. Right. Well, <laughs> that's a disappointing medium to say the least. <laughs> it is. It's so pretty. And then I'm also like, I don't like this. You're expensive. Right. Oh. <laughs> And getting over that now, I'm just like allowing myself to buy acrylic paints. Like, it's okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I did it one time after my son expressed interest. And I was like, oh, your mommy used to be an oil pastel queen. Let me go ahead and just lay this stuff <laughs> out for you. You get excited when your kid's just interested in something you were. But then you also have to realize there's seven and this shit costs. So I'm like, or we're going to do these uh, color art uh, pencils and you're going you gonna to deal with that. And you're going right. to work your way up to yes. everything else. Right. I just recently, well, actually last last year when I was working on Lovecraft, discovered these really awesome watercolor pencils and they're actually pretty cool. They work like you can sketch and then sort of blend your lines into water. Ooh. It's kind of nice, kind of nice. There you go, Brandon. Um, <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm going to have to go ahead like, and oh. get that for my son. I'll, 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 I'll get them. 
I mean, they were cool. <laughs> like, so even if you I'm looking out. sort of I'm sketch like, things out, I know you, don't you want sure to keep are. Pencil lines underneath, you can lightly sketch it out and then start using watercolor on top of it. And then it'll just blend the lines into the water. And I'm like, this, you don't have to erase anything. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really dope. Yeah, since you said you get them, I'll make sure. Hey, PJ, you got a new aunt and uncle. That yeah. way, when you when you hit, you don't forget nobody. You take care right. of who took care of you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Replant that seed early. Um, I did have like a silly question, not so much yes. silly, just like relevant. And then we're gonna get into like some fun questions. Um, not that any of this hasn't been fun. Oh, it's, it's been. been fun. <laughs> it's, it's been, been fun. It's been for informative. It's been okay. Just what I needed. Uh <laughs> I can. I can do anything. She said. She said. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> be like, calm down. Um, what song right now, um, or artist, are you kind of obsessed with, if any? Ooh, um, there are a few. There is. Uh, Moses Somni, who not to keep bringing it back to Lovecraft Country, but oh please do. <laughs> yeah, we're not <laughs> tired. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I actually discovered him on Lovecraft Country. He did that song when Montrose was at the drag queen club when he was kind okay. of you know having that, that whole scene. I am a human yeah. uh, moment. Uh, that lonely world. Lonely, 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 lonely world. It was just such a beautiful song. I was like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, with the quick type. <laughs> like Siri? Oh, my God. Is- oh, my God. Yes, holding your phone out. Like, please, sh- every quiet enough. <laughs> uh, so most of something is uh, incredible. Uh, there's also Emily King, who she's a very light, like a very light R&B voice. But I've been following her for a long time when she was doing these like small little clubs in Brooklyn. She's got this really funky style and I'm just, I'm all about it. And um, of course, you know, there's always my, my go-tos like D'Angelo and Liam mm-hmm. Mahavis and Thundercat and- Oh yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, Deltron 3030 and oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Aesop Rock and there you go, there you go. And... Do you like the internet? I feel like that would be a tribute like and the joy. Mm. And Flying Lotus and Hiatus Coyote and oh see, God. I have this, I have all these lists on Spotify because I'm pretending that I'm a DJ. <laughs> as we all do when they gave us spotify okay. <laughs> you're always like, like no no one's list is hitting my list listen to this right. <laughs> that's what I'm spotify like, makes you Doctor feel who. like yeah, right especially if you do it right and you change your settings to where you can um blend the last 15 seconds of the song with the next yes. one yeah. girl yep. mm-hmm. my slow jams mix is undefeated okay <laughs> makes, makes it makes my makes my time at work go so much better <laughs> oh, it like, does. Just i'm like, where today oh cool let that go just plug it into the computer let it go there's a singer from england named fink Hmm. and he actually did a lot of the walking dead soundtrack he has this beautiful like gritty voice where you're just like i'm listening yeah he He must have done some of those heartbreaking uh songs and episodes i was like carl what are we gonna do because i like to think i'm in the show what are we gonna do carl What's think, happening? Yeah, he's he's got some like really like yep. I'm here for all this. This is my you know. I'm running through the woods and I'm crying. My eyelids. Yeah, he's he's off. really good at that. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let me think. Let me think. I just that's a pretty rich Ooh. list though. I was expecting like, you just go one person. You. Oh no. So that's pretty cool. Oh, she's layered, <laughs> and I like that. I, every time I have a project. I actually create a playlist for it. So when I was working on Lovecraft Country, I listened to a lot of like 50s, like Motown and things like that. And, you know, even though the 50s was before that era of stuff and that was more 60s and 70s stuff, I went in like the Marvelettes, the Supremes, you know, like Marvin Gaye, Gladys Knight. Mm -hmm. I love that. I went in. Or at a at a James, like I really 
That's really, like method really actor like mm-hmm. stuff. I yeah. Yeah. love that. At the Shirelles, you know, like I really immersed myself in the mentality of it because it, it also it also informs the art. Like you kind of I I, I created uh, Orithia Blue's hair and hair color and the style you know, modeled after this kind of kitschy, like Betty Rubble, mm-hmm. uh, because they it totally make sense. Afro or Ugh, in know, her little flip. Right. Like, <laughs> Girl. I, I to have like that kind of like, will you still love me tomorrow? Kind of like. It was definitely giving that vibes now that I think about it, because I think it was so enamored that her hair was blue. And now that when you say the process of, well, I'm listening to this, girl. Again, stalking you. I'm outside. What's up? A lot. <laughs> we just gonna have to be together. To right. <laughs> In the club, I mean just living room, because you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Going to like uh, I have going. wine and we're just gonna be and, I and like, I snacks. yeah. I got gluten free snacks. <laughs> and we're, we're, I was gonna say we're gonna be those people where I'm just gonna be like, hey, I do you wanna see my cosplay? Or right. Right. so I, I have this prop I done. It makes no done. sense, but here you go. <laughs> I was like, ooh, ooh, I can hot glue this and then <laughs> I can girl I can, I can get my cricket and then we can cut out some I'll stuff. put you to work. Okay. I'll put you to work. Don't get me started. I'm like, if you work for food or wine, I got you. <laughs> we can we can make this work. Jeez. So I have some other questions that we felt like would be really cute. And honestly, before I go into the segment, just because I like to make Chris work, not that he doesn't do enough, but I like to make him work when I say work. So I want him to introduce the segment in like a game show like voice. And then I'll go ahead and, and get my Vanna White on. All go right, ahead, go here ahead. Here we go. All right. So wait we a minute, have wait a, a minute. I gotta pose like I didn't tell you to do that. Go, go okay, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Also, we have a new segment now. It is called uh, A Minute with a Fewa. And our guest is a Fewa Richardson. And Brandy Blocker will be asking you some quick fire rapid questions of E4. So there you go. Thank you so much, Chris. So unexpected. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, uh, we only have 11. Thank you for tolerating me, by the way, Chris. Because <laughs> It's why I brought you on. <laughs> I know it's a lot. So I have 11 just fun questions and it's basically going to be like red or blue. You just give me the first answer. Okay. Oh. And if I can stump you on something, that's when I know it was like a good oh. one. Ding, ding. So that's, that's the goal. I hope on more than two of these, you can be like, mm. so, okay. All right. Question one, Prince or Michael? Oh, already. Yeah! <laughs> yes. I got one. <laughs> right. I knew this would be hard for a, uh, a musical person. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to say Michael because I was surprised to when really? I was three years old because I didn't know that he was a man. <laughs> I was three. I didn't know. I was like, but his voice is so high. <laughs> Lord, don't make me laugh at her. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next one: Christmas or Halloween? Halloween. See, that's good. Mm. All right, Spawn or Blade? <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry Can you speak? <laughs> Was that played? Final answer. <laughs> sorry, Todd McFarland. Sorry. <laughs> she did say it like, I am going to get shot. <laughs> super strength or super speed? Speed. In vogue or escape? In vogue. I knew you'd do that. <laughs> Vampires or werewolves? Werewolves. Lion King or Aladdin? Yeah, we got two. <laughs> Aladdin. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was so <laughs> She's Aladdin. <laughs> Reluctant. Was that an answer? <laughs> you made the right choice. Don't don't let anybody tell you, <laughs> tell you different, otherwise. Okay. Right. I am team Aladdin all day. First movie from them that actually got nominated and won for a um, I want to say an Oscar because the category was invented because of the music that was done exactly. on that film. Yeah, so exactly. how can yeah, anyone say, that. don't get me started on that debate. Yeah. I'm like, Lion King. Um, <laughs> Pac or Biggie? Biggie. A different world or living single? Ooh. Different world. Mm. And heroes or villains? 
Hmm. As far as wardrobe, <laughs> I like where your mind's going. I like that. You got to really think about these things. Like, mm -hmm. what do I want to wear on a regular? <laughs> we'll go with heroes. Okay. <laughs> said, okay. She would do that because if you're going to be a villain, <laughs> the outfit is a lot. And she right. already said, I'm not trying to walk around at convention uncomfortable. She already said that. She, like and that, she that big like, Thor, what's, what's her that, name? In, oh, oh uh, Hela. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That headdress. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it, it retracts. It can be practical. You mean you saw her do the, but it's totally different when you're walking around and you're kind of going through a door. Right. All right. Like the girl from uh, Coming to America throwing the flowers. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right last one mm -hmm. and no one's going to be upset with what you choose here okay chris or brandy oh i thought she was going to be another one. Oh yeah you thought wrong we're, we're <laughs> live say, baby did, like, i'm like did she skip <laughs> a question <laughs> i love mm. you though <laughs> of course of course a politician she we're, is we're she does it all the, <laughs> well i'll give her the bonus question okay Team Letty or Team Gia? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Letty, sorry. All right. <laughs> what? She was done I wrong. I, she I was done her. wrong. I am Team Gia I, all day. I love her. I love her. I'm Team Original crap. Girl. You team like, original girl? Yeah, she was the original <laughs> bae. And then you're going to cuss me out when I came in your house? Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I was, he, I you felt see, the way. You had to fix that, though. You, you I had did. to fix no. that. <laughs> well, at the same time, she did stick some things in his nose and in unmentionable. Uh, to be fair, that area. was like her kink. He didn't say the safe word. We're not going to, <laughs> we're not going to blame her for that, to be fair. <laughs> Oh she my ate a God. lot of people. She did, did but but she didn't want also to no, she fair. didn't. It, no, it, she, all it she wants to do nature. was go see Judy Garland and be in yeah. that man's face. That that's so, true. That's true. That so when you say it like true. that, yeah, and you know what? She was commanded by her, you know, uh, the person who summoned her, her mother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and that was almost a, was it was really a, it was a her outfit. selfish act, Oof, I guess so you could say. But and yeah. just the whole, just the design and everything that set that they built. Oh. It was that was a beautiful episode. She was, was. I really was. Her that, performance was, that was nuts. One of my favorites because I was just my heart was getting hit so much. I was like, I need a break. And even though it was like, <laughs> even though it was kind of gory and you know uh, unexpected with the nine tails and uh, the life sucking sex scenes it was a relief i was like oh gosh i needed this episode i really yeah. needed it. Yeah. What? It <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah i needed a it moment. was like y'all been giving me traumatizing moments <laughs> up to this point i just need a minute to, to breathe oh no it was <laughs> still at least for me not not like a hard-hitting traumatizing episode but that was another episode within the first 10 15 minutes there was just something about her performance where i'm like i want to cry every time i see you on scene and then her mm -hmm. friend being um okay. just taken out the game like that during war yeah. i know yeah. it was a fantasy show but so much of that actually happened so when I yeah, take right. a moment to like think about the fact this was really happening mm -hmm. and then you're over here thinking hey you guys know Judy Garland right and they're like we're black so when we go back home there unless we work for her there is no knowing her there's no just walking up to her so right. th thinking about that type of uh situation too I think added to episodes like that but I guess they need to give us some type of a diet version of a um Lovecraft episode because right after that we were back <laughs> <to the bullshit. laughs> we're back at it too you know mm -hmm. everything kind of led back to all the assets were used so there was never anything that was just put out there that didn't come back later so she was essential in the season finale for so. sure and so and you're right he did have that. to um apologize because i know i would have yeah, been bitter like oh you need my help you need you know, to save the world now at the yeah same i was time, surprised she didn't i'm surprised she didn't react that way she really loved him and I, I totally get that so I think that's why I was like I gotta be on her team because when you really love somebody even when they're talking to you crazy and I think almost every woman can relate to that mm -hmm. you're still like I, I don't want anything bad to happen to you like I want mm -hmm. the best for you so his women came through I'm like he was he must have been working with something because I'm like he yeah. had his, <laughs> got his baby mama and his old chick everybody <laughs> everybody's working like, together <laughs> 
Okay. Like, that's balling right there. Right. Okay. <laughs> he wrote the playbook. Right. Yeah, well, he, you know, oh, go ahead, go he definitely had allies and, and folks uh, looking out for him. And there's something I really like about Letty's character because she evolves. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I, I really, I really appreciate about her as a character. She doesn't come in as, you know, a person who has it easy, even though it's assumed. Like there were a lot of questions that I received personally, like, oh, what well, do you think there was, you know, un- unintentional or intentional colorism when casting her as Ruby's sister? I said, I think they wanted to just hire the best actors they could for this role. Of course, there is a tension between Ruby and Letty because there's a there's a breakdown in communication. Mm-hmm. They're both surviving their mother's abuse. Right, right. And so in Ruby's mind her sister had some kind of preferential treatment but then when you saw the way that ruby was treated when i mean uh letty was treated when she was arrested or the way all the family members reacted to her she had no preferential treatment not even from her mother who she was probably like and you know they had she had her as an example i think she's probably the youngest one out of them yeah yeah so that means she had you know a a, an older version of her mother and then the rest of them kind of had a had each other and they were very separated from her it, it seems there there seems to be like the family and then letty but then when you hear her talk about when she you hear letty talk about her mother you know she was left she was left alone long periods of time days you know so this kind of flighty kind of oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna, you know, go off and, and do this thing. It it was a direct result of the kind of parenting that she experienced. But as much as she tried to make it sound like, oh well, I was just, you know, I was just doing this thing and I, I was I just got money here and 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 this there, her life wasn't easy. She was arrested, she was, you know, beat up, abused, abandoned, and it was a direct result of the the neglect that she faced and even though she thought like oh yeah uh, i'm lighter skinned and so there it's go- it's going to be easier for me when i move into this place it wasn't and Nothing i love was. that they they showed that because it even if they didn't intentionally cast somebody who was smaller than her sister and light lighter skin different grade right. of hair mm-hmm. i it read that way especially for exactly. what i call like an und i always refer to myself as an undeniably you know black woman so I'm like, there's nothing racially ambiguous about me in my opinion. So I'm always looking for those characters where I'm like, okay, you're the black I'm used to dealing with. So Ruby's whole storyline had me like from jump. But when her sister came to see her sing and it's like, I really don't want you on stage, but you know, Mm -hmm. here we go. And it's like, sometimes in our little community, you may get that special treatment. But like you said, when you get around these people, all of y'all are this. It does not matter at that point. So I like that they showed that for those of us that have a really hard time, whether you're dealing with someone lighter skin and mixed, and that's a whole nother Mm -hmm. episode within the black community Um, and thinking, and you, you automatically, you just don't have that empathy for them in the Mm -hmm. plight that we all face. Cause you're like, no, you get to be inside the house and I'm out. So it couldn't possibly Mm -hmm. be that bad for you. And I'm like, this girl has been through, not just with her man, not her right. man, but her man. Right. Um, then she's yeah. dealing with everything else outside of this. And then yeah. she's trying to, one thing I did like about Letty, I like that she always did try to come back around to her sister. Ruby mm-hmm. was not yeah. having it. So their right. relationship wouldn't even work if Letty wasn't like, girl, come on now. Like we're yeah. sisters. It's like I need you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I, I really need you. And, and listen, and I, that, I, that pulled I through. wasn't good to you. And right. she apologized. Yeah. And that ended, I think that ended up what, what turned Ruby uh, with Christina because she really yeah. wasn't here for any nope. of it. But it was like, but my sister loves this guy. So, yeah. and I love my sister. So let me go ahead mm-hmm. and take myself out of what I'm dealing with. As good as this may feel, I'm writing for my sister. So I liked seeing that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Ruby was very covetous. She was very envious. And so she imagined that Letty's life was a certain way and it really wasn't. And she also imagined that, like, oh, well, if I if I just had 
uh, a different aesthetic. And then if mm-hmm. I just looked a different way, my life would be different, but she just faced a new set of problems. And then got to see what she was doing to her sister when she saw the young black lady she just knew took her job, basically right. being treated like trash. It's like, it doesn't matter that she got this job, that she's thinner than you. Look at how she's being treated as well. Right. So that was that was really yeah. well done. And then Christina just being honest, like throughout the entire show, she was incredibly honest. Like, listen, if you're going to be a part of this, you have to volunteer and you have to give your life. This is what I can do and this is what I can't. Right. You know, right, I can... Right. I can give you this power to do this, uh, but you know this is this is who he is. This is who he was, and this is why I'm doing this. It, you know, she was always very straightforward, except when talking about William initially, because who can really explain that? Oh, P.S. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do a slideshow. <laughs> right. Someone right. hit the lights. <laughs> Well, this is unfortunately this is the part of the show I hate, which is oh, the we have end. To say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, I'd like to thank a few of Richardson for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Can you tell the people where they can find you, your work, and everything? Absolutely. Else? And you can check me out at afuarichardson.com. That's A F as in Frank U A Richardson.com. I'm also on Instagram as uh, Doctor Fu D O C T A F O O. I'm on Twitter under Fu Richardson. Richardson and on Facebook as well. Man, and I got a Kickstarter going right now if you'd like to support. We have some Kickstarter exclusives like covers from David Mack and some pinups from Ellie Maple Fox and Yuko Smith. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. This, I'm, I'm really going to put my best into this. So if you could support, that would be fantastic. And I'll make sure that I get you some stuff that you won't get outside of the Kickstarter. Oh, all right. You heard it here first. Get uh, excited about May. <laughs> get excited about May 2021. You know, Finding right. something to get excited about for next year is exactly. <laughs> I hope all this stuff is wrapped up so I can actually be a part of the mermaid parade in New York, like the Coney Island. I wanna oh, that would be I have actually heard about that. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm talking to some folks. Uh, who worked on Lovecraft Country's like uh, special effects makeup. And I was like, okay, so can I, I wanna do a creature video. Can we, can yes. we make this happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're getting all these Give me my little self over to the mermaid parade. I know, right? <laughs> I was gonna, I, part of me wanted to ask her that. And I was like, I don't wanna be that person. It's like, can you drop us any, anything about blah, blah, blah. But I like that she just did it herself. Oh yeah, so she's, we been, don't, she's like, she literally has- We don't have to do right. it. <laughs> but until next time, remember to educate yourself and others, entertain yourself and others and empower yourself and others. I'm your host, Chris Fury. My co-host, the cosplay diva, Brandy Blocker with our special guest, of Fiora Richardson. And until next time, we're out. Yay, uh.